Hi, I'm Namrita Setia. I'm a pathologist at University of Chicago. Pathologists are medical doctors who look at slides under the microscope to make diagnoses. And I um, have a special interest in neuroendocrine tumors, that's why I'm here today. I should thank Dr. Uh, Liao and Dr. Quicken for uh, setting up this uh, FaceTime with all of you because my work is incomplete without you and also thank Neuroendocrine Tumor Research Foundation. In the next 15 minutes or so, my job is to make sense of this daunting document, which is the pathology report, and I hope that I'll be able to answer most of your questions without even the Q&A session. So, but let's just begin. So as a pathologist, I may receive neuroendocrine tumors in two forms or ways. I may have received a resection specimen or a biopsy specimen. Resection specimens is often to sort of uh, treat the tumor and biopsy specimens are more for um, diagnosing the tumors. The resection specimens come from Dr. Quicken, but the biopsy specimens often will come from our radiology colleagues. And as far as uh, when you are looking at a report, if the report is say three pages long, it's a resection report, whereas if it's like one or two pages long, it's a biopsy report. So let's start with a long report, the three page one. And you'll see by the end of it that the three page one and the one or two page one are very similar. So the top post portion here in the report, which is highlighted by the very dark blue box and then uh, expanded in a bigger version in the black box over there is what connects the specimen to you and our system. So on the left side of the screen is your information, the name, your medical record number, the date of birth, age, gender, the surgeon who took the specimen out, and the physician who needs a copy of the report and is part of the care team, say Dr. Liao, who needs to know what to do next. Then we have other information when the specimen was collected. And then most importantly, on the right side, we have an accession number. This is the number in our system. This is the number that we give to the specimen. So if you ever have to request the slides or the blocks, you need to reference this number. Now, every hospital has its own way of writing this number. At University of Chicago, we use an S number, S for surgical pathology, followed by the year 22, mean, meaning that the, the specimen was obtained or received in the year 2022. And then this is going to be followed by a unique numeric number, which is sequential and is given to that specimen. So every time you have to refer the specimen in for a pathology department, kind of have to look for that accession number. So with the number, there will be slides and blocks that can be requested. This information is generated in the gross room. And contrary to what the name sounds like, gross room, that it's actually anything but gross. As you can see, it's a team of very helpful, diligent, and lovely people, and their job is to make sure that there are no errors, errors like specimen mix-up. And they take their job very, very seriously, and we are very thankful for their efforts to make sure that there are no specimen mix-up errors. Underneath that is a final diagnosis. This is the bottom line, the most essential information, that one sentence or two sentences will have summary of the most important information that needs to be drawn from the report. And let me just highlight the main points. So for these kind of specimens, you would often see the report as listed as well-differentiated neuroendocrine tumor. And the good news here is that it's a tumor and not carcinoma. Why I say that is because tumors are different from carcinomas. So even in carcinomas or cancers, as we colloquially call them, they come in different levels of aggressiveness. Pancreatic cancer is notorious for being very you know, aggressive, and the five-year survival rate for that is about 7%. Compared to that, the small intestinal cancers or carcinomas, the five-year survival rate is about 50%. And the good news here is that neuroendocrine tumors, especially the GI neuroendocrine tumors, the five-year survival rate is 90, about 95%. So I'm not uh, trying to say that these are not important and you need to just not care about them. But the important thing here is that you especially need a specialized care team like at University of Chicago because it almost ends up being like a chronic disease.
So the next point that I want to draw your attention to that is there in the final diagnosis is the site. As you can see, it's written in the final diagnosis as ileal. Ilium is a part of small intestine that's also jotted down in the synoptic point by point report right underneath the final diagnosis. And why the site is important is, of course, for the management, because that part of the body might need to be resected. But also, based on the site, the tumor may be secreting certain type of biologic substances that may actually be the reason for the clinical presentation. Also, the tumors at different sites, even for the same stage, may behave very differently. As you can see, the small intestinal tumor, which is local, will behave very differently from an appendiceal localized neuroendocrine tumor, which is going to be very different from a liver primary neuroendocrine tumor. So the point I want to make here is that the same stage tumors might behave differently based on the site. And this is the information that Dr. Quicken and Dr. Liao are going to use to determine what needs to be done in terms of the management. And that's why we list it in the final diagnosis. The next point that I want to draw your attention to is the grade. So the grade is listed again at two different places. In the final diagnosis where you see that this tumor is intermediate grade, and then in, again in the point by point synoptic diagnosis which is listed below, which kind of talks about how this grade was calculated. Since grade is very important, let me just talk about it a little bit more. So it can be calculated in two different ways. One is a mitotic count, and mitotic count is just determined by looking at the slide as we have it, and we just basically count the number of cells that are dividing. To determine the key 67 proliferative index, we have to do another kind of special stain. And what this stain does is it doesn't just pick up the cells that are dividing right now, but also picks up the cells that are almost ready to divide. So it gives a more sensitive indicator of the tumor being aggressive or not. And then we combine the information together to give you a final grade. And the grades can be three types grade one, two, and three, which is low, intermediate, and high. Of course, corresponding to least aggressive to most aggressive. And again, this information is going to be used by Dr. Quicken and Dr. Liao to determine how aggressively they need to treat the tumor. So as you can see, even at the same site, say for small intestine, the dark green box is grade one tumor, and the lighter, lightest box is grade two, and in the intermediate color is grade three, and grade three are going to behave much worse, so they need to be treated most aggressively. So the grade is a very important part of the final uh, report or final diagnosis. If you do not see a grade in your report, you should be asking your doctor that that information needs to be provided. After the grade, then we come to the synoptic report, basically, the points in the synoptic report. And we covered the top part, the points that are listed below. You don't need to go through them because what we do is we, we jot them together to come up with the T, N, and M stage. And that T, N, and M stage basically decides what the clinical stage is going to be. And the place where the T, N, and M are listed are at the bottom of the report in the University of Pathology System, but then it could be University of Chicago Pathology System and it could be different at other institutions. But um, this is where you would find the TN or M stage in, in our report. But for determining these stages is we assess T and M separately. T is basically the tumor stage, which means how aggressively at the local site the tumor is spreading. In terms of small bowel, it's going to be depth. In terms of liver, it's going to be how extensive or pancreas. That means it's it's the size. So it's either going to be depth-based or size-based. So that's the T stage. The N stage is the regional nodes that are draining the tumor. The ones that are shown in yellow are how many of them are involved by tumor. And the M stage basically is beyond local. Like now the tumor has gone places, now which places are involved and how far are they in terms of biology is what determines the M stage. And then we put all of them together to determine the clinical stage. So different combinations of T and M will give a clinical stage of one through four, with one being the lowest, four being the highest. Of course, as expected, 
four will be most aggressive and that needs to be treated most aggressive as well. So that information is very valuable in terms of clinical management. So you see the black line, dark black line. So that basically ends the clinical report. Underneath that, we have several other things listed. The biggest paragraph is for the gross description. And that's basically more of a pathologist cross crosstalk. So you say you decide to go to another institute, say MD Anderson or MSK, and now they want to read the uh, look at the slides, but the specimen is no longer there. So they need to figure out what slide means what. So for example, this specimen was 41 centimeters. You cannot look for at 41 centimeters under the microscope. So you need to take selective sections from those 41 centimeters to which are representative of the tumor. And that's what the gross description is. So this is not meant for the patients. This is more for another pathologist and sometimes for the surgeons. But I think you could just leave that to Dr. Lia and Dr. Quicken or to the other pathology institution wherever the specimen goes to. So really that's just showing when we opened up the specimen, it's the rest of it is fine and they're just these small tumor nodules and we recorded what it looked like. But that is more for the, the three page report. Now coming on to the biopsy report, which is for GI neuroendocrine tumors, it's mostly from the liver, as is this report, because liver is a very common site of metastasis in these tumors, as is seen in this case. So you see the beginning is metastatic, but it's still tumor. It's not carcinoma, it's still tumor. So you'll see the same sort of information that was listed in, in the long report here as well. So it's well differentiated neuroendocrine tumor. The grade is listed as, as grade two as intermediate grade. It's metastatic and that we have tried to determine what the site is because sometimes you end up with metastasis before you can know the, what the primary site is. So in this case, we think it's some, somewhere in the GI tract. So in some ways, the accession information is the same. The parts of the, the report are also quite similar, but it's just a smaller report just because right now the purpose is diagnosis and not that it, it, it's a point or a segue in, in the treatment. So we talked about the long report, we talked about the short report. Sometimes it helps to put all this in perspective once you know what the, the background context is. And that's why sometimes it's helpful to know what the journey of the specimen is. We already talked about how the specimen's first stop is the cutting room or the gross room. And we talked about the, the very diligent people in the gross room who make sure that no mix-up errors happen. And then we also talked about how you have to open up because you cannot examine 41 centimeters under the microscope. So you need to take sections and these sections are taken from people who have been trained, who have gone through special intensive training Either they're going to become pathologists or they are pathologist assistants who have gone through special school to make sure that they know what sections to take and the, the implications of uh, taking those sections. So that's what is done in the gross room. But before we can still look at the slides under the microscope, there is more processing that needs to be done and we don't need to get into the complexities of it, but that's done in the histology lab. So histology lab has this extensive workup where they sort of minimize the tissue into like five micron thin sections so that they can be looked at under the microscope by a pathologist who has been trained through rigorous training and fellowships to be able to recognize what a tumor looks like and how you need to best report the information coming up by just looking at the tumor or using special stains so that that can guide the treatment in the best manner. And then another type of report that I'm not going to get too much into the details of right now is a molecular report. And molecular report sort of gives more information than beyond just looking at it under the microscope. Now you're looking at it at a very cellular level in terms of like the genes and the, the copy number plots and, and methylation. And this provides opportunities for personalized therapy. And at this point, I want to thank Dr. Quicken and Dr. Liao for their progressive approach because now we are doing next generation sequencing on all neuroendocrine tumors at University of Chicago. So I'm hoping that all this in, in future is going to lead, uh, lead to personalized therapy approaches for neuroendocrine tumors. 
And finally, I'm proud to say that while we are looking forward into the future, University of Chicago is also excellent at preserving its past and history. We have archives dating back to 1912, so more than over 100 years back. So if we end up making discoveries for future, we have enough specimens that have been preserved so that we can validate our findings and which can be of use for, for personalized therapy in the future. I know this is a lot to take and I've listed my personal information. We also have Q&A session. If you have questions about your reports, please feel free to contact me either the, during the Q&A session or through the information listed here. I'll be more than happy to answer the questions. Thank you very much. Mm.